In this lesson, we're going to talk about gravitational field lines and equipotential surfaces. We'll do some drawing of them. I kind of like doing the drawing because it kind of makes me think of the warping of space-time due to crazy, heavy, massive things like black holes, which I think is a lot of fun, and you should think is a lot of fun, too. And if you don't think is a lot of fun, you should uh, probably take a good, hard look at yourself as a physics student. Here we go. Let's start by drawing some gravitational field lines. Let's say we've got Earth, and we've got a white dwarf star, which is a crazy, dense, uh, dead star that maybe it's about the same size as the Earth, but it's way, way, way more massive. If we're going to draw gravitational field lines, it's easy. We just draw them, as always, pointing inwards, symmetrically spread around a spherical thing, like a planet, and going in like this. Now, for your white dwarf, pause it and try and draw on your gravitational field lines as you would for the white dwarf, relative to how we did for Earth here. Now this is going to be easy, because so all we do is do the same thing, except we're just going to draw way, way, way more, because the white dwarf is a much stronger gravitational field. And the higher concentration of your field lines, the stronger uh, your field. So in other words, right here, that's going to be crazy strong because we have a lot of concentration of lines out here. And these lines do extend for infinity because the reach of gravity knows no bounds. And so out here, it is weaker as shown by a more spreading out of the gravitational field lines. Now let's talk about equipotential surfaces. Once you've got your gravitational field lines, then you can draw your equipotentials. You have to know what they are. And this will help you learn that, and that is that for an equipotential surface, basically is what it sounds like, everywhere on that surface has the same gravitational potential. Actually, the same applies for electrical potentials. So let me show you how this would work. Uh, I can draw a circle, it's almost always circles for point masses, that everything on here is at the same potential, and then I can draw another point out here. And now the next equipotential, I need to draw farther out because the change in gravitational field strength is not happening as quickly anymore as you get farther away from the object. In other words, as you get closer in, the strength of gravity starts to change a lot quicker, or at least quicker per rate of distance or radius that you come in. Now if we did the same thing around a white dwarf star, the pattern would still be circles, but they'd be changing a lot quicker. So I would need to draw them not spreading out as fast as they would around Earth. Now this would need to be more extreme than I'm making it. But I think you get the idea. Now, just to make sure you understand, uh, the radial lines are your gravitational field lines these things here. Circles are your equipotentials. Things tend to orbit, orbit quite well along equipotentials because it's all the same surface. Now this is in two dimensions. If you try and look at it in 3D, it's a little bit cooler because then you have that funnel shape. And you can see that if you were moving radially outward, uh, you would come across a lot of lines real fast um, as you're quite near the planet. And it gets quite steep gravitational rate of change per radius. And as you get out here, it's not quite so steep. And so when we send stuff into orbit out of the Earth, it takes a lot of energy to get things up to these higher equipotential surfaces. Now, the, uh, a new term that's a little crazy is gravitational potential gradient. And it turns out that this is the same thing as what we've all come to know as gravitational field strength, which is g, which is the free fall acceleration, uh, which you might think of as in meters per second squared or as in uh, newtons per meter. Now, as you start here and you work your way outwards, at first, you're going to be crossing over a lot of equipotentials. And you can think of that as a very steep gravitational potential gradient. As you cross lots of them. As you get out here, it's going to be weak. 
gravitational field strength is weak because you, you won't cross as many of these equipotentials. Now that gradient of equipotentials you can think of as the change in potential as you change your radius. In here, you cross over a lot, so you have many delta v's per radius. Out here, you don't have as many, so you have only a few change in potentials per radius or per meter of radius that you move away. And so that is how you end up with this equation being true here. If you think of this equation-wise, you can think that the delta v, or just v, gravitational potential, is equal to g m over r. And your delta r, just your r, looks like that. Now then what that turns into is your g m over r squared, which is the equation that you know and love and have already used for gravitational field strength. And one last bit, uh, asking about the relationship between your equipotential surface and gravitational field lines. Maybe it's obvious, but perhaps it is not, that these are always, 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 always perpendicular to each other. In other words, there's always a 90 degree angle between every field line and every equipotential.